Hello, uh, my name is Kiana Parker. I'm a graduating media studies uh, major at UC Berkeley, and I'm from the Bay Area. I'm just gonna talk about the process that we went through to create some of the pieces here. Over the past two months, the Kerner at 50 Art Collective has engaged in an intensive collaborative process to develop new artworks that investigate and represent our relationship to the report. Through researching the report and the surrounding context and drawing on our own experiences as well as people committed to these issues, we identified fear as a common theme of central importance. It surfaced in our conversations about intergenerational divides, the shying away from bold policy and implementation, and fear's role as a catalyst in solidifying structural oppression at home and abroad through many types of othering. In our challenge, we also present our affirmation and vision, self-care as self-determination, honoring our whole selves, continuity in the lives of those targeted by state violence, and lifting up those who are so often written out of history. Each piece engages this question of fear from a different angle, and while created by different individuals, they each came out of our group discussions and visions. I'm now gonna talk about the collages that you all saw when you were walking into here that myself, Lulu, and Ashley created. Uh, we center each of the panels around the questions from the report itself. What happened, why did it happen, and what can be done? We also added a fourth question that we find essential to this work. Why are you afraid? To address the first two panels, we use images of systemic racism, police harassment, segregation, and white supremacy, black poverty, and unemployment. For example, in Why Did It Happen, students in a newly integrated classroom stare back at each other across the divide of an abandoned cityscape, grounding the so-called educational gap in the real context in which so many black and white students live. The third panel seeks to respond with historical and contemporary solutions instead of solely re-articulating recommendations for new initiatives and experimental programs that could further reinforce the unequal social dynamics at the root of the problem. We envision contemporary solutions as self-care, supporting black trans femmes, envision um, intergenerational love, buying black and drawing on past liberation movements. Often seen as individual solutions, these can help guide the structural policies that are made. Lastly, we added the question that was not in the commission's scope to address. Why are you afraid? We believe that all the policies and social norms reinforcing the dynamics between the two separate and unequal societies divided among racial lines stem from fear. We urge viewers to wrestle with the question of fear and to consider how fear could be addressed in their personal lives, outside the limits of policy and reports, and also how our policies might, strong, might be strong enough to address the violence and tenacity that stems from fear. Thank you. Uh, hello, my name is Dulce Maria Lopez Gonzalez. I am a UC Berkeley student pursuing media studies major in a practice of art minor. I work in the installation that is by the lobby, and in the piece is called Why Are You Afraid? So in this piece, I highlighted that not only has the state persecuted people of color in the 1960s when the current commission was created, it has continued oppressing us up until now. The racism in the United States does not stop with a domestic policy. It transcends borders, shaping the U.S. foreign policy and, the foreign, and in return, uh, shaping the domestic policy. As a country that holds significant power in the world, what happens in the United States affects everywhere. If U.S. lawmakers have prejudices, their prejudices affect their point of view and relations with other countries. For instance, having government officials calling our countries Chejos, or the ICE arrest of 150 people last night in California. If the U.S. invests excessive, monies, excessive money, amounts, amounts of money on borders, military, and arms to regulate its immigration, Arabs, Muslims, Africans, Chinese people, Salvadorians have been affected by these racist stances that impact their migration in the United States and the exclusion they face when they are here. Similar to the police that is meant to keep the peace in communities of color in U.S. cities, 
Many of the countries that I highlight in my installations have had United States interventions to bring them peace. Operations that have resulted in failures like the war on drugs in Mexico, the blockade in Cuba, the war in Iraq, the Vietnam War. So why are you putting borders? Is this a country in which what seems unfamiliar is to be feared? What are you afraid of? What are you so determined to protect the United States from? In my piece, I show the solidarity between the people impacted by these state policies across time and locations in photos that are strangely similar. Checkpoints in Baltimore at the U.S. border, kids with their hands raised in Newark, Ferguson, and Vietnam. I connect the hearts of these individuals who continue to persist and make life in the face of these violent challenges. Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Nico. Um, yeah, and I'm a research assistant with the Haas Institute. I work in the Berkeley Art Museum and for Berkeley Arts and Design. Um, I also co-directed the film that I'm going to be screening shortly, which is called All Last Month I Shout Down Sirens, Drowning in a Blue Dream of a Safeless Name. And uh, first, I want to speak to you all about our altar that we contributed to this space, and so I'm going to read a few words about it. So the Kerner Commission at 50 Conference is a space inherently imbued with implicative interactions between development, planning, and policy as projects which work over communities to which we are intimately tied. This leads us to draw upon the work of the international Black Lives Matter movement's practice of imagining an alternative world gained through alternative means, outside those which undermine bodily autonomy. We as a group created an altar space as a clearly demarcated intentional space for which imagining and practices towards black liberation may emerge. And now to talk about the film a little bit. Um, so Ellie and I collaborated on the film and we wanted to tell a story about some of the everyday experiences of oppressed black bodies, brown bodies, indigenous bodies, and trans bodies, um, which are so often summarized on the level of statistical data and theory. Um, our film humanizes some of these bodies and invites audiences to revel in their glory um, as they live out a queer interpretation of ta Coates's The Beautiful Struggle. Our work depicts the physical environments, pathways, rituals, and hobbies in which these bodies often find refuge. Um, we explore how these spaces and acts perpetuate displacement, violence, dysphoria, and loss, while also forging a supposed safe space for vessels constantly under attack. We sought to interrogate our audience's internalized fears of racialized realities with the question, what are you afraid of? Which thematizes the work of our collective overall. Elle and I explore how the language and ethos of growth and progression um, are loaded with justifications for state-sanctioned violence against black and brown, queer and trans communities. Violence including geographic displacement, environmental racism, and physical brutality. Through this process, we found that survival through these acts of violence is often found within the intimate space of the body. The body as a motif through our film can be seen to be in a constant state of infolding and unfolding in various forms of protection, dance, healing, joy, processes which are shaped in response and resistance to constant onslaughts of violence against them. And now I believe we're going to screen the film. So yeah, please enjoy it.